Hey, Okemsters, this is Mrs. Vandalay bringing you another Okemster video. We are in section uh, chapter 7.4, uh, Physical Properties of Alcohols and Phenols. Um, so we're going back and looking at properties. So what do we think of with, with properties? We're thinking of, oh, what kind of intermolecular bonding occurs here, okay? So that will determine our boiling point and our viscosity and, you know, things that we talked about earlier. So um, it says the boiling points of alcohols are much higher than those of ethers and hydrocarbons of similar molecular weight. So what functional group does an alcohol have? It has an OH. What should come to mind is, you're right, your hydrogen bonding. What about an ether? Uh, if you were to look at an ether, let me show you this real quick. Here's the structure of an ether. I drew it out for you because if you recall, when we learned about Lewis dots and we learned about Vesper, um, oxygen always needs two lone pairs unless it's an ion. And as it is uh, has four uh, electron groups, two of them are lone pairs, it's bent. That's key. It's bent, just like water is bent, all right? And what does that mean for an ether? that it does have dipoles. It does have a partial positive down here where the carbons are and a partial negative. You wanna draw those in. Why is that important? Is there hydrogen bonding? No, there's no hydrogens attached to the oxygen, but there is dipole, dipole. All right, so there is some form of attraction between each ether because of this bent shape. It doesn't look like it's bent when you see it linear like this, but in reality, it is a bent molecule. So then what about my alkane group? Is there really any uh, important intermolecular force? Not really, it has one in the spurs like everything has, all right? So my functional group is an alcohol ether alkane. Notice that they have very similar uh, molecular formulas or you know molecular weights but look at this look at the difference all right so uh, ethanol is a liquid at room temperature uh, dimethyl ether is a gas as is uh, pro propane and again uh, it's all due to what is intermolecular attractions, hydrogen bonding for the alcohols, only dipole dipoles, your strongest for your ether and your London dispersion uh, for just a straight alkane. Okay, so why is this? I kind of reviewed that. Um, we talked about intermolecular forces where London dispersion is your weakest, your dipole dipole is your medium, and your hydrogen bonding is your strongest attraction. Let's go on. All right, oops. Uh, so it says, let's look at the hydrogen bonding uh, between these um, uh, alcohol groups. So the OH bond is, is polarized by, because the high electronegativity of the oxygen atom, this polarization takes pl uh, place of partial charge on the hydrogen atom and the partial negative on the oxygen. So I can have it on here, and actually I can move it over here too. This is also a little bit partially positive, but as is the hydrogen. So now what happens? Uh, we can talk about this attraction, right? Oops, uh, this attraction, try it again, right here. There we go. There's our attraction between the alcohol molecules. So it says two or more alcohol molecules become loosely bonded to one another through hydrogen bonds. All right, so where I dashed the line there, that would be my hydrogen bond. Now it says the hydrogen bonds are weaker than um, normal covalent bonds, the bonds between the atoms here. So alcohols and phenols have a relatively high boiling point because enough heat must be added uh, to break down the, this bonding here, this hydrogen bond. We're not breaking any of these bonds. We're breaking this attraction, all right? Uh, therefore, the, the molecule will vaporize once you do that. So what other properties might be affected? Density, viscosity, Freezing point, the same ones we've been talked about before. Okay. All right. Um, that concludes section seven point is this four? And um, don't wait to be great. We'll see you shortly. Bye bye.